Hey, welcome back everybody. This is video number four for wall framing. Uh, in this video, I am going to have you take some notes, so make sure you have a piece of paper and something to write with. When you're done taking the notes I tell you to take, then submit that on Canvas. Okay, um, so in this video is going to be talking about window framing and window layout, how it's similar yet different than door layouts. So in past videos, we've discussed basic wall framing components. You get your bottom plate, top plates, and on center studs. Okay, we talked about those. In the last video, we talked about what goes into a door frame here with your headers, your jacks, and your kings. Okay. Now we're looking at window frame. And if you look at this window frame, a lot of it is similar to the door frame here. You've got headers, there's jacks and kings on both sides, but now we've got a few components at the bottom, and that's what we're going to discuss. So highlighted in blue here is our rough sill. This is the first definition I want you to copy down. So like rough sill or sill. Now this is not to be confused with your sill plates from floor frame. It's the same type of thing. It's spelled the same sill, but this is a different application. So it's a different component. So when you think of this, don't think sill plates. Think a rough sill or a sill. Okay, so the definition is it is the lower framing member that forms the bottom of a rough opening for a window. Okay, so highlighted in blue here, you know, we've already talked the headers are top, the jacks are both sides. Well, now a rough sill creates the bottom of that opening for a window. Okay, and it's attached to the top of the lower cripple stud. Okay, the cripple studs here, we're going to talk about those next. So it's attached to those. And again, this supports the window, and it also provides a, uh, you know, a place for your sheathing and your interior wall covering to attach to. Okay. Now, if you need another second to copy this down, hit the pause button, finish copying it, and then start back up. But I'm going to continue rolling here. Okay, mentioned in the last slide, we have cripple studs. You can see they're highlighted in blue here. Okay. There's also some up here. I'm going to talk about those in just a second. So in wall framing, a cripple stud is a short piece that fills a space between its sill or the rough sill and the sole plate, or between a header and a top plate. I'll make a small adjustment here. Okay, so it fills the space between the sill and the bottom plate or between the header and the top plate. I'll come back to the header things here in just a second. But it does follow your on-center stud pattern. So these cripple studs for a window opening, they're on the same spacing pattern as your on-center studs, 16 inches or 24 inches. So when you're laying out your on-center studs, those follow these exact same patterns. You're just going to use a different symbol when you're doing your layout process to make sure that your on-center studs and your cripple studs are differentiated, okay? Now, below the window, this helps support the rough sill so the rough sill does not sag and it has enough support and supports the window, okay? It also helps keep the exterior sheathing and the interior wall covering, keeps them rigid, keeps them supported. So that's the purpose of your cripple studs here. Now, above a door, you might get some cripple studs as well, especially, let's say, your ceilings are really tall, like a 10-foot ceilings, and you have an 8-foot tall door. You're going to have several feet of space up there. That's not going to be complete header. So they'll have a big enough header, but then there's still going to be have to, there's going to have to be some space filled with your cripple studs. So you might get them here, um, but, you know, some of your windows or doors might not, and these can happen above windows as well. Um, I'm just saying that there might be some above your headers, uh, going from your header to the top plate. Uh, what we're going to do in this class, all of our headers are going to look like this, so you don't have to worry about that. But below your sill is when you're going to find cripples in this class. Okay? So if you have that, I'm going to jump ahead a number of slides. Talk about window frame. Okay? Again, when we're looking at this, it's a very similar to a door. We've got our header, jacks, and kings, top plate, bottom plate, on center studs. We're just adding two more components to the mix. Okay? 
So the layout process, I'm going to go over this, and then I'm going to review some stuff, and I'll come back, and I'll do the to that layout process in just a minute. Okay? So you're going to start with finding your center point for the door or window. That should say window. It's a little typo here. Uh, so the center point for the window. Okay? Measure out from that center point. Remember to add two inches minimum to the width and height for all windows. If you don't do that, your window will not fit in your opening because it's going to be too small. Okay. Then your trimmer stud is going to be placed outside of those marks. You're going to measure over an inch and a half at the seams, and then you're going to lay out on center stud and cripple stud. Now, if you're doing a door, you don't do cripple stud in most in a lot of cases. So we'll stop there. But since the window, this is one of our extra steps here for the layout process. Okay. All right. Before I do this. I'm going to jump ahead and I want to go through the process here. Again, your first step, find your center mark. Second step is, if you remember back from the last video, you got to use your algebra equation. Your W plus 2 divided by 2. That's going to give you the distance from your center mark to your jack, left and right. So that's the second step. Then you come back in with the on center studs and cripple studs. So we have a 36 inch window. Centered at 38 inches. All right. So, 36 is my W. Add two inches to it, and I'm gonna divide by two. Okay. So 36 plus two is. Let me hear it. Hey, 38. Yeah, I can hear you guys from the internet land. 38 inches divided by two. Now, 38 divided by two. Um, you need to punch in a calculator, but it comes out to 19 inches. 19 inches. And that is going to be the distance from our center mark to our jack. Now, this information will change here and here. It will change with every window, every door I give you to lay out or build. Okay? But the process is the same. So you plug the window width into the W. Add two, divide by two. That's going to give. That's going to get you what you need. All right. Speaking of how it's going to change, take a look here. With this layout, here's my specs. This is a 24-inch by 36-inch window. Okay. Now, when you look at these two measurements, I have given you width and height. Remember, width is always listed first. It's never listed second. If I tell you if the 24 by 36 and you make it 36 inches wide and 24 inches high, your window will not fit and you will fail that build because you have to completely tear it down and start over again. And that's a very costly error if uh, you're building in real life. So there's a lot of time wasted and a lot of, a lot of money that's lost when you build incorrectly. So width and height, in fact, let me do this here. So the 24 inches wide by 36 inches high, width by height. Okay, it's a window and it is centered at 40 inches. Okay, so I'm going to take this information and I'm going to go through my process here. Let me get this laid out. Now remember, this is not to scale; it's just a uh, demonstration of what you would do. We will practice this in class next time y'all are in class here. All right, so first thing, we're going to start with finding the center point. I'll measure over. There's my 40-inch center point, center point, okay? Now, 24 by 36, or 24-inch wide window. Remember, we add two inches to the width. we got to figure out how we measure from that center point. So that's a W plus 2 divided by 2. So... 24 plus 2 divided by 2 equals 26 over 2 equals 13 inches. So from my center mark, I'm going to measure this way. Whoop, I went one on it too much. So I'm going to go 13 inches here. 13 inches that way. And I'm going to have my marks. Now, the trimmer studs we place on the outside of those marks, 
And remember, J is what we're using for jacks and trimmers. You're going to hear me say jacks more than you will say trimmers. So I'm going to have my J here and J here. And again, as I said in the last video, your jack should always be on the outsides. Center mark, jacks, and kings. You build away when you're doing the, the door or window frame. On center studs go one direction. Doesn't matter which, you know, it, it goes one direction. But your jacks and kings always go away from the center mark. Okay? So, we've got that set up. Now, measure over an inch and a half for the kings. So, you use your speed square. Measure over one and a half inches. You put your king here. And king there. So, an inch and a half between the jack and the king. Inch and a half between the jack and the king there. Now, you can measure over another inch and a half and have you set the back side of your king, but it's not necessary. You can just leave it like this and that's A -okay. okay. Now, so we got step one, two, three, four done. Now we're going to go to step five, lay out the on center studs and cripple studs. So, perfect. Right over here, remember this is 16 and 3 quarters, X goes under the 16. Now, over here, I'm going to have a, I'm going to have a stud that should go in place, but since it's inside my jacks, it's not going to be an X, a full length stud. It is going to be a small C for cripple stud. And I'll go next 16 inches over, somewhere right about here, I'm going to have another small C for my cripple stud. Okay? So I've got two cripple studs inside my window open. Now, I'm going to keep measuring, and I'll have my 64 and 3 quarters, and that's, X is going to go under the 64. Eighty and three quarters is my last on center stud. X is under eighty. Now the last thing I'm gonna need to put in here are X's on the ends. Always make sure you have an X on each end. If you're doing the layout and somebody else is building it, you don't want to leave them any room for error. You want them to know one hundred percent where everything goes. So again, don't write teeny tiny little things. Make the X's, make the J's, make the K's, make them big enough where everybody can see them and do not skip any marks. Go through and put them all in there. Now, people should know to put X's, put studs on the end, but they might not necessarily know. So cover yourself, make sure it's done the right way. So we have done all things. Here's your whole layout process. We did our center mark, we, made, we did our math, our algebra equation, we found where our jacks went, we found where our kings went, we came back in, did on center studs. Um, this one here is 32 and 3 quarters, and 48 and 3 quarters. So those, those fit the same pattern, they're just a different measurement. They're little C's instead of and, and don't make them a big C because that can get confusing with your center mark. Okay, make a little, make just a little C. Okay, so we've got all that. So that's what it would take. That's the layout process here. So essentially, if I was building this window frame, this is what my layout will look like here. Okay, I've got found my center mark. I uh, went out, found my jacks, my kings. Got on center studs plus cripple studs. That's what it would look like. And once you have this done, then you can figure out, okay, I know how many uh, on center studs, I know how many jacks, kings, I know how many cripple studs, I know the size of my header, I know the size of my sill. You can cut everything all at one time. In fact, 
So I'll talk about this next one here. So after the layout is done, then you can go measure and cut all your pieces. Again, it's much more efficient to cut everything at one time for a wall section and then take it over instead of cutting one piece at a time, going back, cutting the next piece, next piece, next piece, next piece. It just takes way too much time. So you can build everything at once and then you start installing. And really, step number two, this should say installing king studs and, oh, uh, come on. Come on, man. The wrong button. Bear with me just a second. I'm almost there. Okay. King studs and, king studs and end studs. Um, so you install your end studs plus your king studs. Install your header and install your jacks. And that's exactly the same process as a door. Now, once you have the jacks in and the header in, now we got to figure out where our rough sill is. So you'll measure down for the sill height, which essentially is your height plus two. So let's go back over to here. Now's where we take this 36 inch into play here. So this 36 plus two inches, we will measure down from the bottom of the header here and here. 36 plus two, so 38 inches. So we measure that down and that's gonna be the top of your sill. Now, make sure when you put this in that your sill plate does not go on top of those marks, then your window opening is going to be inch and a half too small and your window is not going to fit. So make sure you sit below those marks. And then you're going to be able to cut and install your sill. You toenail this in place. And then you can come back in. We do cripple studs, fill those in, then any other on center studs. So it's a couple of extra steps to go from a door to a window. Okay? But it is. Um, it's not that much more work. Okay? And in fact, you could take a door and you can convert it into a window, or you can take a window and convert it into a door. And it's pretty simple. Um, if you're making a window from a door, you just add a few boards. If you're making a door from a window, you cut out a few boards. Pretty neat. All right, so that takes care of this video. So at this point in time, um, and here's what I want you to do to copy this last thing. I only had you to copy two things down. I want you to copy this uh, process for framing in the window, okay? So copy steps one through seven. When you have that done, take a photo of it, submit that on Canvas, and we'll see you in class next. Have a good day.